guys, I'm Daniel Bennett. I'm Coco Bermejo. And we're here to talk about composition today. Yeah. Uh, but more specifically, Coco, we're talking about composing music for web content. You know, like webinars, podcasting, mm -hmm. you know, short jingles, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How, to, how to own your own content, how to be the master of your own ship. Yeah. That's a good yeah. thing nowadays. Yeah. How yeah. to make money at this, right? Sure. You sure. got to be the master oh, yeah. of your own ship. Totally. So yeah. we're going to show you how to write jingles. We're going to show you how to use rhythmic motifs. Some some uh, chord uh, techniques, some inversions, how to use triad pairs. Coco's going to show you all of his tricks over there on the yeah, keyboard. Yeah, keyboard sounds, uh, layering, uh, harmonic ideas, you know, rhythmic ideas. Yeah. It's amazing what you can do with just a keyboard or a guitar. So mm -hmm. it's remarkably simple. So we'll see you guys on the other side. Yeah. Some of the best podcast jingles come from simple diatonic chords. A diatonic chord is simply a chord that's naturally occurring as part of a scale. So if we play a C scale, Coco's going to play a C scale all the way up. All the white keys on the piano, and he's going to go back down. No flats, no sharps. You can play at home. It's easy. Now he's going to play the first chord, but he's going to break it up as a triad. He's going to play C, E, G. He's going to move his hand up one note to D and play DFA. Up another note to E, E, G, B. He's creating chords. Up another note to F, F major. Up another note to G, that's G major. Up another note to A, that's A minor. And then up to B diminished. It's actually half diminished if we fully extend it, but you get the idea. You don't even have to know what that means because you're just going to sit down at your keyboard and play the white keys. Now, those sound nice. That could be the start of your jingle. Mm -hmm. Let me play the horn over that. We'll bring it to life a little bit. Mm -hmm. This time I'm gonna invert my notes. I'm gonna change the order of my notes. cool right it starts to sound like a melody now that might be the beginning of your jingle but we want to create a specific mood when we have our jingles right coco That's right. you know we want to convey a mood so this time let's pick a couple random diatonic chords that we can draw from uh how about one four five he's gonna play c major up a fourth to the f up a fifth to the g and then resolve back to the one He's grabbing some of the cool sounding chords. Again, he's not thinking that hard. He just has to look at the, the keyboard, the white keys. He's playing C, F is four, G is five. Now I'm gonna arpeggiate with him. Good, I'm gonna give him a new rhythm. Let's do this rhythm. Uh, ba -bo -ba -ba -bo -ba -ba -da -ba -ba. Great, let's go up a whole step to the key of D. Same rhythm, same sequence. I love it. Let's do both keys. Key of C and then up a whole step to D. That could be the start of your jingle. It's very happy, right? That's right. So this might be something, if you have a happy podcast, maybe something just about... Um, Health and wellness or something to that effect. Nature. You might want to use some one of these happy chord progressions. Uh, let's try another one. Uh, this one's Coco's favorite. Let's do yeah. one, six, four, and five. So C major, A minor, F major, G major, and then back to C. Let's try that. Increase the tempo a little bit. Mm -hmm. Kind of sounds like an old doo-wop mm -hmm. kind of vibe, right? So this might be like a podcast dealing with nostalgia, uh, American right. history, something mm -hmm. to that effect. Right. So that's another mood that you can create just using diatonic chords. That's right. Try it at home. A great way to compose podcast jingles is to tap into the power of the mode. A mode is just a scale. It's a scale that comes from a home scale. Now, we're not going to get into that. An easy way to play a mode is simply play a major scale and then tweak 
certain notes in the scale, flat a few notes or sharp a few notes, and you will create these modes. There's different ways to, to play modes, to think about playing modes. I think this is the easiest way if you just want to do this quickly. So my favorite mode is the Lydian mode, okay? I call it the smart person's mode. It's great for academic content, uh, science. It just has a nice uh, smart person kind of sound to it. It's nothing more than a major scale with a sharp fourth scale degree of that scale. So if I'm playing in the key of B flat, the fourth note of B flat scale is an E flat. In this case, the E flat will become E natural and it's going to create the Lydian mode. Coco, set us up with kind of a science kind of sound, uh, you know, like, 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 a, like a National Geographic kind of voicing on the, on the piano. Yeah, give us something. Oh, that's nice. It's like I'm swimming with the dolphins. Notice I repeat my idea. As soon as I get an idea, I, I repeat it. And by the way, we're making this up as we go, which is actually how you would compose at home. We're just making this up so you get to kind of get into our brains a little bit. Uh -huh. That's a scary thing. And you can see how we're just repeating ideas and getting new ideas. Now, the voicings on the keyboard are very important. If you're doing this with electronic instruments, you've got to get a voicing that matches the mood that you're trying to convey. And remember, you are branding your content, okay? So you have to repeat your idea a lot, okay? It has to fit, and the listener has to know that it's your show that you're trying to promote. Okay, let's try the Mixolydian mode. Mm -hmm. This is great for casual content. Imagine you're playing a G scale, but we're going to flat the seventh scale degree. So the G scale has an F sharp at the very top. In this case, we're going to play an F natural. It's going to sound like a good wrong note. I'm going to play the scale with Coco. Mm. And then uh, let's develop a little theme. Notice we're already kind of swinging it a little bit because the sound of that mode has a nice laid back kind of sound, like almost like we're swinging. Again, we're making this up. So you're watching how we're creating this kind of in the moment. That's mm -hmm. just how we're, both of us are feeling the right. Mixolydian mode. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. All right, the Aeolian mode is fun. This is the minor key, okay? So not, this is nothing more than the minor mode. So A minor would be mm -hmm. uh, the notes of a C scale, but starting on A. It's all natural, no flats and sharps. Coco, play an A minor uh, chord. I'm going to play the scale. Now let's develop a theme. Yeah, just trying to resolve my idea. Blah, 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 blah. Again, mm -hmm. making up on the spot. Right. Uh, I would recommend using an even number of bars, maybe two bar phrase or a four bar phrase. Mm -hmm. Coco immediately could feel like my pulse, and that's the theme of the show. Mm -hmm. Okay, that might be for more serious content, right? Mm -hmm. That kind of had kind of yeah. a sad, somber mm -hmm. sound to it. Okay, let's finish with the Locrian mode. I love this mode. Okay, it's very spicy. It might be good for uh, if you're doing a show about food or international travel. I don't mm -hmm. know, something like that. And it's, it's a scale based on the seventh note of a major scale. What that really means is in the key of C, the seventh note is a B. If Coco plays a B and plays from B to a high B but pretends that he's in the key of C, <laughs> you're going to create the Locrian mode. Okay, you don't have to remember all of this. Just listen to the sound of it as I play it. Mm. Kind of strange, right? Let's do a little theme here. also kind of sounded a little sad. Let's try it a little faster. Maybe it'll sound different, the mood. Okay. You know, 
the tempo matters, the number of bars, mm -hmm. it all matters. So try this at home, work it out, experiment, okay? My only thing is it has to feel uh, fixed. It has to feel like it's a very specific idea that you're trying to convey. Remember, you are branding your content. Your listener has to know that it's your show. Mm -hmm. So repeat the idea. Give it a shot. Another great way to compose melodies for podcast jingles or online content is to play dissonant triad pairs. Mm -hmm. Now, we've been talking about chords that go together, uh -huh. mm -hmm. <laughs> like diatonic chords. These are chords that we're going to show you right now that don't go well together, but you're going to make them feel good by using repetition, by reordering the notes and playing chord tones, and by giving it a fixed rhythm. Mm -hmm. Let's do a minor triad that goes up a sharp fifth to another minor triad. It's gonna sound really spooky. So G minor to D sharp minor. Oh. <laughs> Let's increase the tempo. Let's give it a fixed rhythm. Uh, do da ba dee ba ba boo ba ba da. Another great method would be to, do, to use the same chord sequence, but make both of those chords major. Let's do it in the happy key of C major. We're gonna play C major, again, up a sharp fifth to A flat major. Has kind of a nice suspense kind of sound. Again, you're looking for a specific mood for your online content. Let's try a little faster. Let's give it that fixed rhythm. Do da ba dee ba ba. Kind of cool. Let's try another one. I like this one. It's the Irish Celtic folk music sounding triad pair. I like this one. Let's play a major chord and we're going to go down a whole step to another major chord. Let's play G major going down a whole step to F major. Let's speed it up a little bit. Fixed rhythm, do da ba dee ba ba. So I'm using a fixed rhythm. I'm re reordering the notes. I'm inverting the notes in my chords. I'm playing around with the tempo. Mm -hmm. Keep it short, keep it concise. Repeat the melody idea as much as you can mm -hmm. and try it at home. Another great method for composing podcast jingles or online content is to play a fixed melody, but change the chords that are happening underneath the melody. So Coco and I are going to play uh, a fixed melody with, in the key of G. This one's real happy. Oh, that's nice. I like that. Now he's going to play E minor. I'm going to play the same melody. has more of a somber taste. Mm -hmm. How about an A dominant chord? A mixolydian, I'm gonna play the same melody. Mm -hmm. How about F major? He's gonna play F, I'm playing the same melody. Mm -hmm. How about the grab bag? He's gonna play anything goes. It's gonna be dissonant. I don't know what he's gonna do. Uh, it's always a surprise when Coco's back there. Uh, but I'm gonna play the fixed melody. See, he brought it back to the key of G at the end. Mm -hmm. That's a great compositional tool. Yep. Coco's a great composer, so he knows that. He's bringing back that home key, 
so you can make a dissonant and come back to the home key. Remember, when you're composing these short jingles, use repetition, use uh, a nice fixed melody and fixed rhythm. Don't use too many notes. Make it sparkle, make it memorable. Brand the content, it's your content. Make people remember you. Another great technique when you're composing web music or podcast music is to take an existing melody and change from the parallel major to the parallel minor. Your listener will recognize that it's your theme, but it'll sound a little bit different. So let's just take a, a fun little melody. Let's take Twinkle Twinkle. We're going to play it in the happy key of C major. Okay, now we're going to play it in the parallel minor, which means I'm going to flat the sixth, seventh, and the third note of this particular scale that exists in this song. So you'll hear the difference. Kind of cool, right? So that your listener will know it's your theme. Obviously, now remember, it has to be your original theme. Uh, but you're just changing it a little bit. Maybe it's mid-show and the content has become a little more serious in the show. Mm -hmm. And you want to just change that melody. Let's try another one. Let's do um, Somewhere Over the Rainbow, the happy key of B-flat major. Here's the opening theme. <laughs> Okay, now we're going to play that same theme in the parallel minor, which means I'm going to flat the 6th, 7th, and 3rd note of the B-flat scale. <laughs> kind of cool, right? It changes the emotion or the mood of your melody. Uh, so try that at home. Uh, again, it, this might be mid-show. You might want to just start to change your melody a little bit mm -hmm. just to fit the content of where your show is going. So give it a shot. You know, Coco, maybe we should just play a song for the viewers out oh, there. Well, that would be great. Yeah, yeah, maybe something that encapsulates everything that we've talked about today. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. rhythm, yeah. melody, uh, using ostinato, which is repetition. Yes, sure. uh, mm -hmm. Developing an idea, mm -hmm. uh, using different moods, different modes. Mm -hmm. Scales. You know, mm -hmm. Yeah, scales. How about, you know, there's a song we, we play every week. It's called Sinking Houseboat Confusion. It's a funny song title. I blame the song titles on Coco. Sure, blame it on me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, but sinking houseboat confusion is like a whole range of emotions. On my, I play it on saxophone. Coco plays keyboard and drums, mm -hmm. and we could just play a little bit sure. uh, for you guys out there, and you could just listen to the range of emotions that we try to convey. Sure, uh, because really that's what you're trying to do as a composer, and uh, you know I think of these songs as songs that are just full of little little jingles mm -hmm. that are just coming out every ten seconds. Sure. Yep. And you can think of it when you're listening to this song, you'll hear the different moods and emotions, and you could almost like pluck different emotions mm -hmm. out of the song. Right. <laughs> it is, yeah. We you do know, this every week, folks. We do we do it every week, and there's a different emotion every time we play this music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Singing Houseboat Confusion has a lot of emotions. Sure, sure. Uh, I used mm -hmm. a whole tone scale, mm -hmm. diminished scale, right. uh, minor scale, mm -hmm. major scale. Yes, right. You know, I you might have noticed that the theme is... Bo -da -do 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 -do. Mm -hmm. Ba, ba, right. ba, ba, ba. But then you have that sense of danger when you start using these whole tone scales. Right. So I start yeah. tweaking that melody a little yeah. bit, uh -huh. and it just changes the uh -huh. mood. But I think the listener knows that it's the same song all throughout. Exactly. Uh -huh. I mean, this is the thing. You have to brand your content so mm -hmm. they know that it's you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. even though you're changing the mood. 
So we've talked a lot about original compositions in this class, right, Coco? Yeah, yeah. But we haven't spoken about public domain. Mm. Public domain is a piece of music that was composed before 1925. 1925. Yeah, right. that's a long time ago. Yeah. So you can use an existing melody from a long time ago. It's called public domain. Uh, maybe a hymn song, a folk melody, a classical theme, and you can weave that into your online content. If you're producing a web uh, webcast or a you know a podcast or something, you can weave that into your show. So Coco, set me up with a little bit of a groove here. I like to set up a loop when I'm composing these. So he's going to give me a, gro a groove, and I'm going to see if I can pull out some of these public domain melodies on the spot. Go ahead. Okay. Now, what I like to do is play an original theme first. I know it's major, so let me do a little major theme. So maybe I'll come back to that at the end. Now let me play something uh, familiar in the public domain. I mean so that would be my first theme. Let me drop in another theme. Uh, you might recognize this one. sounds very folk music, American history, very classic Americana. Folk songs, uh, Simple Gifts, a little Aaron Copeland, mm -hmm. um, Amazing Grace, yeah, and yeah. what was the first one I did? Oh, Give Me That Old Time Religion. religion. Now, we're, I'm doing this on the fly. It just depends on what I'm hearing. So that's how you would try this at home. You just set up a loop and try to remember some melodies. Now, you have to really be immersed in music to, to do this. You have to be aware of some of these melodies that mm -hmm. exist. But I think you'll surprise yourself. You can think of some older melodies and you can use them in your original mm -hmm. content. You can weave them into your original content. So give it a try. Let's talk about rhythm. Sometimes the thing that's hooking your listener is actually the rhythm of your composition, of your jingle, even more than the melody. So yeah. you can play this at home with a friend. You can have a friend sing a rhythm to you. Play that rhythm on your instrument, on a drums, or even on a guitar mm -hmm. with a single chord, and see if it kind of like grabs you. So I'm gonna put Coco to the test here. Coco, here's the rhythm. Um, da 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 da. Oh, he had it in the bass drum. Mm -hmm. Kind of had like a funky kind of uh, James yeah. Brown kind of exactly. sound. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, let's try another one. Do da ba da di da da. And you notice that da 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 de. Mm -hmm. He changed the chord. When the rhythm sort of dropped a little bit, he yeah. went down to a different chord. Mm -hmm. So already he's getting ideas. Here's another one. Um, do da do do da do. Great. Simple. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe it would catch you in some way. Here's another one. Da 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 da. Ba ba. <laughs> so. I think that one's been used before. Well, but you can, you, can, you can use these ideas, these rhythm ideas, right. and then work them into your theme. Absolutely. Sometimes you're hooking the listener with the rhythm more than you think. Absolutely. It's not just the melody. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so try it at home. So let's talk about keyboard voicings, you know, the sound that you can make on a keyboard to create a certain mood. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so mm -hmm. what, go, what goes on when you're composing these jingles, Coco? What kind of voicings are you using on the keyboard? What's going on in your thought process? Yeah, sure. Uh, I usually prepare my keyboard to have uh, a host of sounds, something obviously a piano, number one. Number two, you know, some type of string sound, mm -hmm. uh, some type of pad, you know, for science fiction something percussive maybe, you know. So, you know, 
th those are basically sort of my go-to. Right. Know. So you got a mm -hmm. classical piano sound, a Correct. percussion sound, mm -hmm. strings. Mm -hmm. uh, set, set us up here. Play something, and let's let's see what this sounds oh, okay, like. Sure. Yeah. Surprise me. Okay. Ah. Do you want more out of your coffee? <laughs> Folgers, right? Yeah. So you know. innovation. Right, mm -hmm. right. Uh, maybe, um, I don't know. Even cooking. a bank commercial. A yeah. bank commercial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I love it. Try another one. Okay. So maybe something, you know, science fiction like. Ooh. Swimming with the dolphins. Notice he's using the Lydian mode that we talked about earlier. I like that. Great. I love I love it. I love it. Obviously, mm -hmm. that's uh, uh, science, nature, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, great. Try another one. Okay. So maybe something percussive. Okay. Travel, leisure, exercise. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right. Movement. Movement. For the active adult. Right. You know, <laughs> or for those animal videos. The yeah. animal videos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's funny how this the sound of your keyboard will just direct where it goes, and mm -hmm. that the listener will make these connections when they hear the sound right, right. of your keyboard. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great, so try that at home. Work out your own voicings. Any other thoughts? Um, no, well, you know, again, keyboards have lots of sounds, so, you know, be inspired, create. Create. Mm -hmm. Give it a shot. You know, we should play another song for the viewers out yeah. there. Yeah. You know, this yeah, this song yeah. that I'm thinking of right now, it's mm -hmm. called Patience. And oh, it, it yeah, uses yeah. something called 5-4 mm -hmm. time signature. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's a fancy way of saying there's five beats in every measure. Correct. Which really <laughs> means that it's an odd number of, yes. of beats. Yeah. So it's like it's got the musical hiccup. It mm -hmm. goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, mm -hmm. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, mm -hmm. 1, 2, 3. Yeah. It's a different feel. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a little funky in nature. 5-4 has mm -hmm. a little bit of a quirkiness to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's... Maybe, again, earlier in the show we talked about how a rhythm might make you compose a certain way. In this case, the time signature might make you create a cool melody, mm -hmm. and it might speak to your listener. Yeah. So let's try it. Maybe sure. I'll play it on flute. Mm -hmm. I don't always play it on flute, but I'll play it on I haven't done a lot of flute today in today's class, so I'll well, play it on flute. There you go. Here's your chance. <laughs> Musical hiccups. Ah. <laughs> boom, How about that? Ba -ba -ba <laughs> boom, ba -ba four, five, four. boom, mm -hmm. ba -ba five, mm -hmm. four, five yeah. beats in a measure. Yeah. When we play that song, it gives me ideas and it makes me think to myself, wow, there's so much more that I can come up with when I structure it this way. Mm -hmm. Five, four, who right. would have thought, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's amazing how the meter or the time signature can just instigate and push you to create a melody or do something a little bit different. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. And the I'm, listener will know. Right. I mean, again, that was 5-4. I mean, there are other time signatures that are odd, such as 7 or 9. Yeah. Yeah. We so. play a lot in 7-8. Seven, Correct. 7 mm -hmm. beats per measure, and the 8th mm -hmm. note gets the beat. Right. You know, you're probably mm -hmm. saying, well, doesn't the quarter note always get a beat? No. Yeah. No. In this there, case, the eighth note gets the beat. There's some music where the eighth note gets the pulse. Yeah, yeah. A whole mm -hmm. different way of feeling the music. Right, right. So uh, get into meter. You know, yeah. Coco, we'll probably do a show one day where Coco just talks 
for an hour mm-hmm. about meter. Sure. As a sure. drummer, you're, that's, that's right. what you do. Right. You know, playing a nine or 11, yeah. even 13. Yeah, so the number of beats in yeah. a measure mm-hmm. might be some right. crazy well, How about number. you talk about the, the, you know, the melodic scales that you use in this song? Right. So, patience, so, so uh-huh. patience really is using a C mixolydian scale. I start on the flat seventh mixolydian. means wow. It means flatted seventh. Mm, there you go. But we mm-hmm. talked earlier in the show about the modes. Mm-hmm. Okay, so a mixolydian, that sounds very fancy. It's not so hard. It's just a major scale mm-hmm. with a flatted seventh scale degree. There you go. So okay. the very top of the scale, this, the B natural mm-hmm. and it, in a C scale, you make it a B flat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that creates kind of almost like a Celtic sound. It could sound bluesy. Mm-hmm. It can kind of have a Celtic kind of sound. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It sounds great on flute. Yeah, yeah, so it does. It does. It's, a, it's, a, it's a cool mode for flute. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, yeah, and you know, the, the chords that go by as well. You know, uh, uh, quite fascinating. I mean, the, though they revolve around the, the, the tonal center of G major, you know, it goes through the four chord and the seven chord, the flat seven chord even. Yeah. So, yeah, quite a bit of harmonic uh, development in that song as well. Right? Yeah, so, mm-hmm. so really we're just using what, what we what we talked about today. We're using all these ideas. Right. And right. we're putting it into a song. Mm-hmm. And, of course, you know, this is micro composing because if you're going to make this a podcast jingle, mm-hmm. you know, you got five seconds to do something, ten sure, seconds sure, to right. come up with your jingle. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So make it count. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't develop it for 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. You got to go right to the point. Exactly. So yeah. very punchy, you know, uh, a melody would really work for something like that. So I'm going to explain to you the different kinds of microphones that I use for the drum set. I'm going to start with this. This is what's called a large condenser microphone. It has the widest frequency response of all the microphones that I use for the drum set. That's why I use them for overheads. These are the microphones that go over the drums. And um, number two is the ever-popular SM57 microphone. As you can see, I mic my snare drum with this. I mic my toms with this. I mic my bass drums with this. And uh, they're very good for loud uh, instruments such as drums, um, electric guitars, you know, basses, anything that uses an amplifier will typically use something like this. Okay, so for these bunch of microphones over here, how about I start with this? This again is a large condenser microphone. Difference with this is it has three settings. It has omnidirectional, cardioid, and figure eight. Omnidirectional is when uh, the microphone picks up sound from all the way around, the front, the back, and the sides. Figure eight is when it picks up sound just from the front and back and not the sides. Right. And this is what I use, you know, when mm-hmm. I'm playing saxophone, we do our weekly live stream concert. Yes, yes. And I use this microphone. I mm-hmm. love it. I mm-hmm. love that. Yes, it's perfect for saxophone. It's definitely my go to mic for saxophone in this studio. Yes. Yeah. What about this one? This one here is a ribbon microphone. Now, this is something that I would use for brass instruments, even for woodwinds also. Um, Again, it's also very sensitive. And this is a figure eight. Again, this type of microphone picks up sound from just the front and back. And um, again, but also it also has that very old style sound like when, you, you know, like records from the 60s and 70s. So like it's that. yeah, it's very good for that. It's very cool for jazz. And now mm-hmm. what about this one that I'm speaking that into? That one that you're using is the ever popular SM58, which is the go-to microphone yeah. for singers, vocalists, podcasts. Yeah, I love it for flute too. Coco always uses this when I play flute. Uh, it's a great, nice, clear, full sound. It's a little more full yeah, than yeah. the 57s. Yes, uh, Coco yes. showed you he's got the Sure 57 mics mm-hmm. on his drums, which mm-hmm. are great because drums, you need something that's just going to cut. But this is, a, to me, a little bit more balanced and full for a wind instrument or for the voice. Yes, it's basically designed for the voice and you know all the instruments that's within that register. Yeah, so now let's perfect. talk about pricing because a lot of mm-hmm. you guys are producing shows from your house. Mm-hmm. You, we all want to save money. What would this cost, the ribbon mic? Yes, ribbon mic is, you know, this is something between, you know, $100, $200. Okay. You know, and your SM58 is about $100. $100 for this. Right. What about the one in the front? Uh, a large condenser microphone might cost you something like $200 okay. to start with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's not it's not horribly expensive. Not not that expensive. I mean, it could be yeah. worse. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you, you could, you know, there are microphones that are like $3,000, but, right. you know, that's a just another level. But, but you could you could have a basic setup for mm-hmm. some wind players and for a vocalist or even just speaking voice with just these three absolutely instru- th- three yeah. microphones. Yeah. Let me start by uh, showing you the fader, which is this. This will 
uh, control the volume of the sound that's going through that channel, in which case right now it's my voice. So if I were to bring this down, my voice gets softer. If I were to bring it up, my voice gets louder. Now, what's an ideal volume if you're doing a podcast? Are you, should you play it safe? Is there a middle setting? Well, yes. The, you never really want to go up, upwards of minus 12 dB. Okay, and is there any kind of visual? Does it tell you if the audio is peaking at right. all? Right. Like right over here, as you can see, you know, uh, if you can see the little green uh, lights that are going now. So that basically says I'm safe. If you start seeing, you know, the lights going up in red, then that you might be causing distortion. Okay, that's very important. And I know that there yeah. are certain platforms that mm -hmm. won't even allow you to produce content that is distorting if the audio distorts. I know Spotify, for instance, yes, has yes. This very strong quality control mm -hmm. for any album release that has uh, audio peaking. So, Correct. So mm -hmm. definitely, if you're doing this at home, be aware of that. Yes. Okay, so next is the uh, EQ section, which are these blue knobs up here. These are the knobs that control the low setting, the low frequency of the sound. These are the mid-range, controls the mid-frequency uh, of my sound, and the highs. And what's an ideal setting for, for web content? Do you have a, a place where you like to keep those knobs? Well, typically, um, uh, they, they should just really be at zero, zero gain, something like this, where you know all the knobs face 12 o'clock. Okay. Yeah. And then from there, if you have from to there, make small if, you know, adjustments, yeah, small adjustments, you know, will cater to my to, your, to you know the taste of your sound. Say, if I wanted my voice to sound slightly bigger, I might crank the low end, as you can hear right now. The low right. end of my voice it, is getting bigger. It's changing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Or if I want a brighter sound, uh, which also gives the impression of the sound actually being, uh, sounding closer to you. Right. So just when I do this, it's almost it sounds like I'm right next to you. Right, right, mm -hmm. right. Okay, yeah. great. Mm -hmm. And lastly, as panning, it's how you position the sound. You can position the sound to the left or right. And uh, I like my horn instruments, you know, slightly to the left, maybe around 11 or 10 o'clock. If you listen to a lot of jazz records, you notice that horns are usually on the left. And guitars and, you know, basses maybe to the right, slightly to the right. And drums, I would just sort of pan them center. Okay, and let's yeah. talk about pricing. What would a mixer like this cost? Something like this. This is a Behringer 16-channel uh, mixer. This is about $300. $300. Mm -hmm. So you could buy mm -hmm. this for your setup, and this would get you mm -hmm. what you need. This would give you Absolutely. what you need. Absolutely. This connects straight into your computer via USB. And again, it has 16 channels. You could definitely record a band with this, do a podcast, so all these problems can come up when you're doing a live stream or if you're producing content for a podcast, sure. web sure. content. Uh, you talked about in the earlier segment, uh, you can have the perfect sound and then realize that when you put it out to the world, mm -hmm. people are listening on their iPhones. Sure. Sure. You know, mm -hmm. who knows what they're listening on. Right. Mm -hmm. So even even if you have the instruments panned perfectly, mm -hmm. the, the, the listener may not hear all this. Exactly. Again, you know, remember that most iPhones or phones for that matter only have one speaker. So yeah. it's technically mono. It's mono. Like, I'll give you an example. Here in the studio, we broadcast our live streams in stereo. But, you know, once they actually hit Facebook, it, you hear it back mono. Wow, yeah, mm -hmm. and we've talked about this a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have to create a sound that's good enough that it sounds good even as a mono Absolutely. Uh, playback. Absolutely, yes. Uh, and that's mm -hmm. a big problem. I mean, that's right. tough. Now, what can we do in the studio to, to, to compensate? I mean, can, can we jack the reverb or the bass, or can we do anything to make up for the fact that our listeners are using cheap iPhones or well, something? Really, the only thing you can do is do sound check after sound check after sound check. You know, listen, uh, listen back to it on your iPhone or on your laptop, which is what people use, you know, to listen to live streams these days. I don't think people actually listen to stereo, you know, systems with big speakers anymore. That's a very good right. point. Mm -hmm. Remember, when you're producing content for mm -hmm. the web, your, your, your viewers or your listeners are not sitting there with, with $10,000 stereo right. systems. Or home theater systems with big speakers. No so. way. They're mm -hmm. on their phone. I mean, right. if, you're, if you're lucky, they might have headphones in. Sure. Sure. But probably not. Probably not. I found mm -hmm. that even that's not the case. Exactly. <laughs> you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. So all you have to just, you know, you just have to test and test and test until you get that really good sound that you like. Yeah, and it's, mm -hmm. every platform is different. We found mm -hmm. that Facebook uh, is different than Zoom. Mm -hmm. It's different than YouTube. Right, right. And, and speaking mm -hmm. of these, pl these platforms, mm -hmm. th another issue that we talked about earlier in the show, uh, using public domain versus using original music or 
copyrighted music, mm -hmm. you could get into some trouble here. So take our advice. Mm -hmm. Use that public domain. Mm -hmm. yes. Music written before 1925 yes. is mm -hmm. legal. You can use that in your in right. your bumper music. Mm -hmm. uh, you can mix that in, in with your original music. Mm -hmm. Uh, like I said earlier in the show, I like to always start with an original theme mm -hmm. before I start to quote some public domain. That way, it's more of a, an homage, sure. if you will. Yeah. You know? So yeah. legally, I'm mm -hmm. not like stealing music. Yes. Uh huh. Uh, but I know we've talked about this. Facebook has really cracked down on people using copyrighted material. Oh yes, they have. Oh yes, they have. They have blocked live streams from people using copyrighted content of recordings, you know, famous songs, for that matter. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we have friends. This has happened to people that we know. Yes, yeah, you know, they're, they're doing a mm -hmm. Facebook Live show midstream. The, the, con the, the live stream mm -hmm. just stops. Yes, I mean, again, folks, it's 2021, and there's the digital, uh, the digital Copyright Act that Congress has passed basically saying you can no longer use copyrighted material for broadcast without permission. Right, which is all the more reason why it's so important to create your own content. Absolutely. That's why mm -hmm. this, this clinic is important because right. we're, mm -hmm. we're giving you guys some tools about mm -hmm. how to just own what you put out there. Exactly. Why use somebody else's songs when you can write your own? Right, right. right. And that mm -hmm. being said, you know, if you're looking for a great company to help you aggregate your original jingles, mm -hmm. use something like, like, like CD Baby would be great. Sure. It's a great company. Mm -hmm. They will um, they'll push out your, your original content uh, into... You know, different uh, Spotify Rhapsody. They, right. they'll, they'll link mm -hmm. you up to uh, a all the streaming sites. All the that streaming provide, sites, you know, mm -hmm, songs and playlists and so forth. Yeah. They will also get you set up with licensing, music licensing, like using BMI mm -hmm. or ASCAP. Yeah, that way, if your song would, you know, had it been used for say a commercial, you get royalties. Right mm -hmm. now, if some of this seems confusing. Mm -hmm. Just go to cdbaby.com. That's a great website. They've been sure. around for a long time mm -hmm. because CD Baby will basically do all of this for you. Mm -hmm. I think it's a one-time $30 charge or something. You you put out some, a release or even a single or even mm -hmm. a jingle. It could be your 30-second podcast jingle, mm -hmm. and you will just toggle in CD Baby all the different platforms that you want it to right. be available mm -hmm. on. CD Baby right. will say, hey, do you have a licensing now, CD Baby is not your licensing agent. The licensing mm -hmm. agent would be the, the BMI or ASCAP. Correct. Mm -hmm. And these are the, the, the places that track um, sales or mm -hmm. that, that, that track if you're, when your music is being used by a mm -hmm. third party and they'll pay you. Correct. I mean, they monitor your uh, uh, broadcasts all over the world. So say if your song was being played in China, you might actually get royalties for that. Yeah. By royalties, I mean money. Yeah. You could really get paid for uh, your song being used for different reasons all over the world. Yeah. Right. And remember, when you register a song with CD Baby, for mm -hmm. instance, they're going to give you a unique ISRC code, mm -hmm. which is a digital tracking code for your track. Yes. And yes. this is how the robots can find your track all over the world. I mean, right. they know that it's yours. Absolutely. Every mm -hmm. every every uh, bit of commercially released uh, music mm -hmm. has its own unique code. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the internet now. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's how you can protect yourself. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So give it a try. There's a lot to think about, but in a way, yeah. just take it slow. Take it slow, and it's, you know, it's uh, enjoy the learning process. After all, if this is what you want to do, take your time learning it and have fun. You guys have been a great audience today. Thanks for being here. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you can take these ideas and create your own web content, whether you're writing music for a podcast, a webinar. Uh, you know, use these simple ideas, rhythmic right. ideas, melodic right. ideas, mm -hmm. shapes, colors, mm -hmm. different voicings on the keyboard. Yep, sounds, you know. There's so many things that you can tap into, and it's remarkably simple. So give it a shot, and we'll see you on the next show.